haunting photographs and now cursed paintings. I guess you could say I'm feeling a little artsy this week. I don't know. Grab your easels and paintbrushes, folks. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters, and here are the top 10 unspeakable cursed paintings in history hiding in plain sight. Number 10, hunting cave painting. Okay, this one right off the hop comes to us from an astonishing 44,000 years ago. It was found on the wall of a cave on an Indonesian island. Now, researchers were able to date this painting that far back due to the fact that the cave it was found in is still a living cave, which means that rock formations have been growing over the painting and being able to date those, they know that it's at least 43,900 years old. Nice, guy just smells a leaf and he's like, ah, oh, it's old, it's really old. But it could potentially be even older. Who knows, right, hard to say. The painting itself features what looks like a hunting scene with four wild pigs, some small buffalo, and a group of really small hunters with spears, nothing too crazy. Now the strange part is these hunters, other than the size, they're all human and animal hybrids. Yeah, they look like something from Marvel Comics. Comics. They all have elongated faces like an animal snout and a lot of them have tails. So not really sure what's going on here. There's actually one tiny human that has a beak. So it's interesting, but again, we have no idea. We don't really know why they depicted the hunters this certain way or why the animals are so much larger than them also. But there's also no other usual signs of human life found in the cave, like bones or hunting tools, anything like that. This cave may have acted like some sort of special or sacred spot for them, but a sacred spot that only holds a strange hunting painting? I don't know, it's a little bit creepy. We need to know more, but unfortunately, it's 44,000 years old, so. We'll never know. Number nine, giants in Egyptian paintings. This one is less of a specific painting and more so just a feature that is seen in a lot of ancient Egyptian artwork. So I figured I'd give it a mention, especially in this list. There's a common theme of giants in a lot of these paintings. Now this may have been a representation of people being a higher status, or they could have been literally describing a god. But many believe that this may be a sign that there really were giants in ancient Egypt. And considering how strange the pyramids are to us still to this day, and how little we really know about their construction, there's actually a fair amount of steam behind this theory online, so I have to mention it. How can we say for sure that there weren't giants? Know what I mean? In 2017, researchers also found the supposed remains of Sadnacht, an ancient Egyptian pharaoh. This also could be the oldest known giant. It is a skeleton with gigantism. So again, a lot of history in between that we'd love to know, but we don't because all we have is bones and temples and we're like, ah. No idea, no clue what happened. Number eight, vandalized cave painting. Ooh, here we go, this is what you don't do. Here we go. This painting is the oldest known painting in India and it was found in the walls and ceilings of the Siddhanavasal cave. Now, it was originally believed that this painting was first created in the first century BCE. Now, the paintings depict things like human figures, fish, elephants, birds, different floral patterns, all that kind of stuff. It is said that another artist ended up drawing over the original, which is an incredible shame and honestly, just a dick move in general. Even today, we don't do that with graffiti. If a graffiti artist does that today, that's it's game over. I played Grand Theft Auto, it doesn't end well. These paintings have been severely vandalized and a lot of the areas are in quite bad shape. There's something about paintings, especially paintings that are this old, that makes me feel like they should just not be touched, let alone painted over at all. Because the Citadel Vassal is a rare sight. It's a Jain temple of the Pandian era, so yeah. If you did this, you're definitely cursed. If you paint it over, yeah, you're cursed, for sure cursed. Don't touch things. Stop touching things. We can't even breathe on some of these cave paintings anymore. You know what I mean? We can't literally look at them because our breath is gonna break them apart. So just leave them. Number seven, Brazil caves. This is an interesting cave painting because of the fact that it's widely debated when exactly it was created. Yeah, most of the time we're all arguing about what the image is, you know, because it's art. But this time we're talking about when the image was. Haha, <laughs> mixing it up a little bit, how fancy. The Serra de Capivara National Park is located in Eastern Brazil. And it is the home to a bunch of different rock shelters that are decorated with incredible and elaborate cave paintings. This area includes scenes of rituals, hunting, trees and animals, and some scientists believe that the oldest of the paintings date back to at least 25,000 years ago. So long, I can't even fathom how long that is. Now there are others who argue this because that would go against what we currently believe is the date of human settlement in the America, so there's art telling us one thing, and then there's people telling us another. Then there's me telling you both, going, hey, hey, hit that thumbs up, subscribe. I'm just in the middle of history being like, hey, check it out. But -up, up here's an ad. Number six, action comics. Okay, I'll take a little bit of a left turn, you know, talking about paintings and art. I'm trying to, trying to blend one in here. With all these new superhero movies coming out every other week, it seems, they all share a similar multiverse theme. But what if comic books actually predicted the future at one point in history? Well, back in 1944, a year before the Hiroshima attack, Action Comics published this issue. This super adventure has Lex Luthor investing this, you know, explosive powered by, you guessed it, nuclear energy. The US government 
it actually reached out at this point. Obviously, a comic book company didn't know any of this. And their comic was so accurate that the government asked them to delay the issue. Yeah, you can release it still, sure, just, you know after the fact. No spoilers, I guess. How shady is that? A year later, America dropped these explosives on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and it changed the world forever. John Byrne, famous comic book writer, he's pretty much known for all his comics seemingly coming true later in real life. He also wrote an issue for DC Comics where Superman saves a space crew right after the shuttle breaks apart after launch. And right after this issue was released, sadly, the Challenger accident, that's when it occurred. Yeah, a lot of creepy coincidences aligned with art throughout history. Number five, the Madani with St. G Giovanni. This painting is currently in the Hall of Hercules in the Palazzo Vecchio in Florence. Probably fucked one of those words up, but you know, I'm just Canadian and I'm gonna try my best. Thank you. The painting shows the Virgin Mary, you know, infant Jesus, of course, and St. John. But we can also see this object floating in the sky in the background. What's even more interesting is that a man is looking up at said object in the sky. I'm not saying a UFO, but you know, what the fuck is that? It's definitely a UFO, right? I don't know. He's even covering his eyes from the sun in order to get a better look at this object, while his dog, his dog appears to bark at it as well. You know, when a dog sees something in the sky, that's, that's how you know it's real. Art historians believe the flying saucer looking thing is an angel. That's what my mom looks like, apparently. That's a terrifying angel. It looks like Ultron in the sky floating. If angels look like that, I don't want anything to do with the afterlife or angels. Thanks so much. Others believe aliens, of course, and also there's others that think it's a future version of us visiting our past. And we just happened to photobomb, you know, this, <laughs> this painter in history. The thing just came and landed and waited for like 46 hours while the guy painted and was like, Photobomb, see ya. You know what I mean? I don't know what this is. I don't know what I'm looking at. If you have any thoughts or concerns or comments, comment down below. Help me out. I don't know. It looks like an alien ship. I'm terrified. It's pretty creepy. I don't know. That's a weird, uh, that's a weird painting. It just looks like a flying weird ship with like pegs coming out of it. Number four, the Nazca Lines. Ah, massive, but definitely art. We've all heard of alien crop circles at one point or another. I remember watching the movie Signs when I was young and then I couldn't sleep for like 13 years. Yeah, that scene did it. That scene really did it for me for like 46 years of my life. So this next one uh, freaked me out a lot. Just 200 miles southeast of Peru, we can find hundreds of markings etched into the earth. They're these massive pieces of art, like crop circles, but almost more intimidating, dare I say. The biggest ground graffiti spans over 12 1200 feet, and many believe this was an ancient ritual for water. Given its location, that theory actually checks out. Another theory written in 1968 in Eric Von Daniken's book, Chariots of the Gods, suggests that ancient Nazca was a site for alien visitors, leaving behind, of course, knowledge in the form of these massive doodles. Like, thanks so much, that's really gonna help us. What about like money for, you know, tuition? Maybe you can leave those next time. Maybe some gas, do you have any gas? Maybe drop some gas before you leave. Knowledge is great too, and we love those, but that's not paying the bills. Number three, lizard hands. In 2002, in a cave discovered in the western deserts of Egypt, researchers found tons of paintings on the walls, thought to be dated back to at least 8,000 years ago, if not even further. Again, I can't even fathom that time. This painting features animals, humans, and sometimes headless creatures, which led to the cave being nicknamed the Cave of the Beasts. But there are also hundreds of handprints outlined, which is on one hand, very cool and you know beautiful historically. But on the other hand, pun intended, a little creepy. The most unusual of the handprints, however, are these 13 that are extremely tiny. Now this would be endearing and very cute, but what was once thought of, you know, little tiny baby hands, little little baby hands, those are actually not human at all. An anthropologist realized this in 2006 when she realized that these were much too small and the fingers were much too long. So yeah, definitely lizards. It is also thought that these handprints may belong to lizards or perhaps baby crocodiles, but we still aren't really sure because again, thousands of years ago. It is definitely interesting and kind of fascinating to see all these handprints on the walls of the cave, of course, but it definitely carries a mystery behind that we'll never know the real answers to. Imagine holding an alligator up for that long to do prints, that'd be so scary. <laughs> Just breathing and stinky alligator breath. You're like, ah, stop. Does that alligator turn? I've seen that on Reddit quite a bit. A lot of people are getting fucked up by alligators lately on Reddit. Number two, Medusa. Next painting comes from Caravaggio. We all know the story of Medusa, right? The woman with snakes for hair that when you look at her, you turn yourself into stone. That good, nice bedtime story we all remember. And this painting really captures her essence and beauty, right? That look in her eyes. It's almost like you get chills just from this depiction, right? This painting was meant to be a depiction of the defeat of Medusa. So nice happy ending for us here watching at home. The legend goes that Perseus, who was the son of Zeus, he was given a shield by Athena. Now he took said shield to battle Medusa and he managed to outsmart her by letting her catch a glimpse of her own face in the reflection of the shield. Yeah, gotcha. You played yourself. And then she turned herself to stone and this is when he took his sword and then beheaded her. Yeah, he kind of 
He, off with your snake head. This painting was created by Michelangelo Merisi de Caravaggio in 1597, and it was actually his second of the kind. So yeah, we love a man with a theme, apparently. Just loves headless medusas. I just beat God of War a day ago, so this painting gives me all the emotions and all the feels in real life. It makes me believe a woman with snakes for a head actually existed. I don't know, do we believe that? I kinda believe that. Don't look behind you, she's behind you. Number one, the hands resist him. Okay, here we go, finally, last one on this list. You've made it, you've been brave, you've been bold. Hit that thumbs up, not for me, but for yourself. A little for me and us on the channel and all the hard work you put into it, but also, for yourself. Painter Bill Stoneham created this work of art back in 1972, and it's most famously belonged to actor John Marley from The Godfather. He's the guy who wakes up with the horse's head in his bed. Him, yeah, you're like, uh, oh, got it. There he is. He got this painting at one point in history, but later it was found on eBay all of a sudden with claims that it was cursed from an anonymous previous seller. Okay, a little interesting. The painting was found abandoned in an alley behind a brewery, which is pretty promising off the hop. Almost immediately, the family who bought it claimed to have seen people in the painting move. And on top of that, apparently the figures would leave said painting and then mess up the house and then go back in. That's a bold excuse for a messy house. Should've used that when I was younger. Yeah, I cleaned up earlier, but it must've been those uh, painting guys. They came and had a party and then went back into their sailboat where they froze again for the night. This is terrifying, but is it believable? Let me know in the comments. In fact, let me know all your comments, thoughts, and concerns. It's spooky season soon, so we're gonna crank up the scary content on this channel just a tad. So if you already haven't hit that subscribe button, I got you. Go ahead and hit that. Take your jacket off. Stay a while. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters, and I'll see you next time on Bumblebee. Peace.